Hey guys, how you doing today? <clears throat> Time is here. Well, <clears throat> this is going to be part two of the keto diet um, podcast that should have been out seven years ago. I'm sorry, um, but I have I have the second part right here. I'm going to play. Um, so. Um, if you don't remember part one, part one, we were talking about um, diet and exercise, nutrition for older people, also in the black community as well. Um, so in this one is the follow up. This happens about two weeks later on. We were supposed to have a weigh in, but we didn't have a weigh in because Barry slipped through it. He's, <laughs> he messed up. Uh, he didn't carry through what we were supposed to, to get together. So. Um, we were supposed to do this, but uh, he, 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 he was slipping. <laughs> That's the only way I can tell you. <laughs> I can tell you he was, he was slipping. And uh, so we never did do that way again, but I'm just going to play this anyway. Um, so hopefully you got some information um, with this. So uh, without any further ado, um, this podcast is being brought to you by um, the Healthy Apple Tree. Um, this is my health um, company, and I am a I am a um, a been a coach of uh, executive coaching leadership. Uh, I'm also uh, did some counseling with the weight and diet and that kind of thing. So drop a line to me. Check me out. Uh, I'm, I'm always here. So um, if you want information, just 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 holler at a brother. Just holler at a brother. <laughs> anyway, um, so the, um, in the description down here, you'll see um, what how the way to get in touch with me. Also, okay. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and start this podcast, and uh, we're we're just going to have things going on. Like I said, this is um, we're going to be with Barry and myself. Okay. <coughs> Welcome back to the Healthy Apple Tree. I'm here with my, with, uh, my best friend, Barry Phillips, and we're going to have a quick discussion on uh, our keto diet. Today was supposed to be the, the day that we start to do our challenge, but uh, challenge. But uh, we, he forgot. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. <laughs> I see the shirt. <laughs> dilly dilly. <laughs> So, so we're here to, uh, to talk about this situation, and we're going to have a really good conversation because uh, in the in the month that um, uh, since we've been doing this, I've been doing a lot more reading, a lot more research, and uh, and uh, now I've come to uh, I have a little more information now than I had about a, two months ago when we started this. Um, this uh, new way of living, and uh, there was a uh, H HBO. There was a Netflix uh, documentary called The Magic Pill, and I want to recommend that you see it because it's a fantastic documentary talking about uh, keto diets and how people have used it for uh, changing their lifestyles and and actually to help them get over some ailments. Um, and it was really good. They started out with the Aboriginal people in Australia. And they talked about how they were eating when they got to eating foods that was foreign from their lifestyle. And what they ate was a lot more protein diets, more fish, uh, more chicken, more beef in their diet. 
However, when the white man came to Australia, they introduced them to grains. And one of the grains that they introduced them to was, uh, well, this was in South Africa. I'm thinking about South Africa. But same situation. They introduced them to eating more carbohydrates. And the thing about carbohydrates is that carbohydrates are really foreign to our body system. Um, we're carnivores for a reason, and we're not uh, herbivores, which are plant eaters, because we don't have the the, the, the teeth to break the the, uh, the the hard fiber down. We don't have the stomachs to break all that stuff down. So we are more of a hunter gatherer type of person, as opposed to uh, someone who would eat uh, more plants, but. They wanted to get them back to eating the way that they had eaten before, uh, hundreds, 200 years ago, that the way they were eating before they were introduced to uh, carbohydrates by the white man. And uh, it was a really good, inter interesting um, dichotomy when you saw how they were eating before the white man and then after the white man introduced these carbohydrates to their diet. Now, we're going to fast forward. Um, another 200 years now to the present day, and now that they have been eating what the white man had, they have more cases of diabetes, they have more cases of heart disease, they have more cases of, of uh, thyroid problems. They have a whole lot of host of the problems. And the host of the documentary asked them, before the white man came, what kind of diseases were you guys dealing with? And he said, well, before the white man came, we were dealing with uh, crocodiles. <laughs> they were dealing with um, uh, those types of insidious things that they were dealing with on a natural basis as opposed to not dealing with diabetes, not dealing with cancer, not dealing with um, obesity, high blood pressure. And that's what they're dealing with now as opposed to the way they were eating um, 200 years ago. So... The white man introduced this new way of eating, even though it was a better way that they thought it was for them to eat, and the, the food tasted really good. It's not really in their best interest for them to, to continue to continue to eat this way, because of all the the, the side effects of these of the diet that they were eating. And these side effects are the same things that we're affecting right now, because we have higher rates of obesity, we have higher rates of Heart disease, we have higher rates of cancer, we have higher rates of chronic disease, and this can all be related to our diet. And that diet is basically more carbohydrate and based. So it was a really good it was a really good information about how our diet has really affected our outcomes with health. And by taking a more keto approach, a more protein approach, as opposed to eating more carbohydrates, it's definitely better for you. And it's a better way of living. And they had some other people who were there, and they had a kind of like a, maybe like a, a, pros, a small prospect of study with people that changed their diets into eating one way to another. And it was really fantastic how these people lives had been changed because of their change into this keto diet. So I thought it was fantastic and uh, my sister love introduced me to this, this uh, documentary and it was so fantastic I couldn't, I couldn't put it down. So I, I sent a text to um, uh, Barry and let him, uh, he has Netflix also, I know he does. He's cheap but I know he has Netflix. So. I introduced him, to, I sent it to him, but he's probably, he's a busy man, so he'll probably power watch it sometime in the near future. But, anyway, well, the thing that I've noticed in the last two weeks, excuse me, the last two months, since I have been switching my diets to a more keto-friendly diet, is that, is that I have... It's been a transformation. 
this is the first diet I can see in a long time that I've actually lost weight. And I can I can I can definitely say that uh, and the proof is in the pudding. Okay. I mean I was I was flabbergasted. I said, really? I can't believe this. I was over at Bobby's Burger Palace. I was at work a couple weeks ago. And I was able to sit my butt in the chair and I was able to get my stomach into uh, the bar and was able to to eat without my stomach in the way. It was fantastic. I I, I mean I was I was on cloud now. Then I, I, I ate at um I went to um what was uh an, another restaurant um and I know I had stomach problems at that time too but I was able to get my stomach into um the booth without any problems. I went to Texas Roadhouse. I was able to get in there and was able to be comfortable. And I was like, my God. I've also noticed that, um, like these pants that I'm wearing now, I'm wearing my nurse's uniform. And um, it's, I, it's, I've lost some, some weight size because uh, I don't really need to tie this up anymore. If I tie it up now, if I don't tie it up, I'm just going to slip off my, off my body. <laughs> and so you know, I'm going to be showing my, my, my derriere to people. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> the dilly dilly. <laughs> then the Costco dilly dilly. <laughs> and so you know, I'll be in the dilly dilly police department. <laughs> but I've noticed that I've lost weight. And that's, and that's the exciting thing to me. So um, I'm going to bring um, Barry into this conversation. And uh, I'm, I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that he, he gave this information to me. Um, first of all, and he, I can say he probably saved my life because this way has really helped me overnight. And I just want to say thank you. The other thing that I want to say is that the way that I'm looking at the perspective now, the whole picture now, that I have more information to see what you were trying to tell me, I have a better picture now of where we're going with this. And then I also want to say is that now that I see the whole picture, why isn't everybody else not doing this? I just don't understand. I just don't understand. But uh, I'll bring Barry in. Barry, come on in here and and uh, chime in, and, and we'll continue our discussion. Hello, everybody. Once again, um, that chooses to listen to our podcast. Um, that, well, let me start with what you were just talking about. Um, and uh, in no way, I claim to be an authority. I'm still. He's not an authority of anything. I know, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a student to the, the, the keto diet. Uh, or, uh, or, um, and. Uh, that being said, you be, you be, uh, being new to the diet and you're seeing the results now, have you also noticed that you, your body feels a little different? And the, in that, you um, you mentioned about your stomach being upset. Because when I was eating a lot of carbs and um, um, a lot of stuff that I didn't need to eat, a lot of sugars and a lot of carbs. I noticed that I had a lot of, at least once a week, you know, you know, I was having some kind of stomach issue, where I, you know, uh, uh, diarrhea, you know, once a week or something like that. Effect. You know, that went away. I had swelling in my legs. That went away. Um, have you noticed how you, you feel differently? Your stomach's not upset like it used to be. Have you noticed that at all? I've noticed that. Um, I'm able to have good bowel movements. And you, yes, yes. Exactly. <laughs> I think boils down to this, yes. but I'm more regular. I'll say that this, I'm more regular. And the second thing about this is that um, I don't have. I I know when I have to go now, and I also know I enjoy going now, as opposed to not going before. Yes. And, and what I would at the risk of getting too deep in the bowel <laughs> That's all right. I talk about stuff all the time. <laughs> what it look like? <laughs> yeah, a cleaner bowel. You know, you, 
Yeah, you know I mean? it's, yes, yes. It's not as yeah. soft, I'll say. It's, it, it's, it's more formed. It's more formed. It's a yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's, the, that's the, the key to it is that it's formed and that you don't strain. Because I always tell my patients, if you got a strain, you don't need to do that. But it comes out much more easily, and I don't have to coax it out. Come on, man. Thanks. Come on. <laughs> I know you got to do this. Come on. <laughs> and, and another thing, you 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 know, those of you that indulged or are indulging, for those of you who are thinking about it, uh, what you'll notice is, you know, there is a lot of give ups, you know. But as you as you progress into eating more ketogenic eating more low carb, uh, letting the, the carbs and the pastas and the breads and the sugars go, and you're eating good food, good meats, you you know, uh, using real butter instead of margarine, you know, those are the things, the luxuries that we've given up, I've given up years ago in, in the battle against obesity that I was losing, and I had given up butter, oh, butter is too much fat, it's, you know, but you don't have to give that up. Yeah, and actually, it's good for you to eat a level of fat, mm-hmm. yeah. of good fat, yeah. so that your body feeds off of that yeah. in effort to lose weight. Yeah, you know. It, 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 so the give ups, it's okay. I'm not eating as much sugar. I'm not eating. Well, I'm not eating sugar. I'm not eating breads. But the food I eat tastes good. The vegetables I eat taste good. I'm eating more vegetables now mm-hmm. than I ever had. I'm eating. Real meats instead of process, you know. Uh, have foods. you have you noticed this? Because I've noticed this. Now that I've been doing this for over two months now, my taste buds have become more sensitive, meaning that I can I can taste differences now in my food. My sensitivity for salt has gone really low. I was, um, this past week, I went to uh, um, Egg, Spect- Egg Spect- Spectacular um, up in Owings Mills. I went there for uh, discipleship. We, we met together as a brothership for, for the last time for, for our class. And and I, I ordered a, set, a grilled salmon with uh, a chutney, a, a mango chutney, and it had some grains on it. It wasn't the best thing. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I tasted the salmon, the salmon was like a maybe like a four ounce salmon. Mm-hmm. It tasted salty as heck. I mean, yes. I, I can de- yes. I can just detect it. I was like, oh my god, there's so much salt in this thing. I mean, it, it tastes it tastes like a salt lick. So I've I've noticed that my taste buds have gotten really really sensitive because I can detect a lot more foods now, or the texture and the taste than I had before. Case in point, I went to a place called, um, it was cheap, I don't, I don't admit this, but I only had one scoop though, okay? I went to this place called, the um, the name of the, of the um, place is called The Daily Scoop. It's an ice cream place. Hey, where is it? It's in Pasadena. It's in it, they have they have the best ice cream. They've had bacon ice cream. <laughs> but I was able to I had one scoop of this butter pecan ice cream and it was handmade. This was the best butter pecan ice cream I've ever had. It was so rich. I can actually taste all the flavors and I can also taste the creaminess of the milk, of the milk fat. And I've never done that before. And I know the difference now. Um, so that's helped me a lot because I'm able to enjoy my food better because I can taste it now. So, I mean, I was shocked. I mean, that was a, that was a benefit I did not expect. So tell me. So that was a treat for you. Well, it was an unexpected benefit, but I enjoyed it. It was a treat. Yeah, yeah. And you notice you, as you given up that, even though you, you had a little sugar, okay, yes. But prior to that, 
giving up that and the craving. You know, you don't crave it. Mm -hmm. There's no craving for sugar. The longer you stay uh, true to the diet, there's no craving for it. Of course, we all are going to get all, we're going to have a little sugar and yeah. something. Yeah. You know, a piece of birthday cake. Yeah. Or, yeah. Like you said, an ice cream treat. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I don't think that's, you know, yeah. that's, yeah. that's not the, 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 the uh, spoon of death, so to speak. <laughs> uh, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you know, the cravings, the thing is, you don't crave it. And as you stop, mm -hmm. and those of you, like I said, new to it or considering it, once you have immersed yourself in to eating, giving up breads and sugars, you don't get hungry as much as when you eat good protein. Yeah. Right? And less carbohydrates. Yes. You're not hungry. So you can go longer. And that's where intermittent fasting comes in. That is the key to the key of that. Now, Learning how to intermittent fast. So that's your next step if you had an indulgence. Well, it's very easy. It's not, don't get, because we hear fasting and everybody panics, mm -hmm. even myself when I first had mm -hmm. fasting. I got to go for food, uh, mm -hmm. without food for weeks, what days? <laughs> no, it's 40 it's, days or 40 nights. It's, it's breaking the cycle. Um, <laughs> we've been told, other guys, we've been told when we have three, four, six times a day, you're breaking that cycle and you're only eating when you're hungry and you're only eating until you're satisfied. So that that couple that in turn will turn into intermittent fast if you use it correctly. Like I, for instance, uh, to revisit, um, typically in the mornings, um, when I started out, I would eat, I would have eggs, uh, maybe, uh, and however you like the eggs, you know, sometimes I'd go in the lab and uh, and I'd have some, some sort of bacon, turkey bacon, you know, or something like that, that, turkey sauce, and I would go, and that would be, let's say, 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning, and I would, at, at, in the beginning, I try to go as long as I could. Usually, in the afternoon, about three o'clock, I'll be something. And I've been able to stretch that man up to five and six. So, from eight o'clock, let's say from eight o'clock in the morning until about five or six in the evening, I haven't eaten. Well, of course, you can drink coffee or, mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. but I haven't eaten since mm -hmm. then. And the, the, the more in tune your body is to it, like in, the, in the beginning, because you have to get used to breaking that cycle, so you may get hungry quicker. You may, so you, eat a little, you may need to eat a little something, maybe a piece of cheese or something to, to stretch it. But after your body starts to void itself of all the sugars and the bad carbs, you go longer. You, you'll find yourself three, three or five, not really hungry. Four or five, yeah, it's time to eat. I know it's time to eat. Five o'clock. Okay, you're not famished at five, and then you eat at five or six, and then you don't eat again until the next morning, seven. So, let's say you ate at six the night before, and you don't eat till eight o'clock the next day. You fasted for fourteen hours. Mm -hmm. You fast. So that's a that's a that's a good fast. That's an intermittent fast, and then you go from eight to six. That's another 12. So now you've injected an intermittent fast. And that's not to say in the 20th, you still need something, you need a little something that, that makes you know, But mm -hmm. the, the more you inject intermittent fast into your keto diet, the, the better results you're going to see. You know, you'll see your body burning fat better. And, and as the months go, you'll say, yeah, I'm losing weight. Okay, yeah, I can see it. My pants are getting smaller. Now that was the part that that threw me off when I started this 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 this, this diet. Mm -hmm. Now, using what Barry told me as the guy as the basis or as the God as the underlying principle of what he taught me was that the intermittent um, the intermittent uh, the intermittent waiting to eat was helpful for me in order to start the process of ketosis. Now, from what I've read now is that when you do the intermittent fasting, okay, the longer you do the intermittent fasting, the more fat you burn, okay? 
So the longer the, the longer it, it that you are in ketosis, the more fat you're going to be burning. Okay. What we're trying to do is to get your body to use its own fat to burn its own fat instead of the fat that you eat. So when we're doing ketosis, we're trying to burn the fat that we have already stored into our body. Now, let me, is, is that good? Yes, that's good. Let me uh, actually. You want to hold it? Let me tweak that just a little. Okay, bit. go ahead. Go ahead. Actual ketosis is maximizing just what Thomas just said. Just what TJ said. It maximizes the <laughs> the fat burning process. <laughs> so the actual getting into ketosis, but it's difficult. Usually, it's not. It's, it's attainable, but and it's not something that you have to. Have. You don't have to get into ketosis mode to burn fat. But it is the maximum. You're, you're burning fat at a maximum level when you're in ketosis. But it's kind of different. It, 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 you probably read on some of this. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of difficult to get to that, to be in ketosis all the time. I don't think anybody can do all this. But it's, you know, it's just a maximum. But if you maintain, if you maintain a level of, of fat burning in ketosis, right, as so you, you know, not maximum ketosis, but if you maintain that level, like you said, through intermittent fasting, you'll still obtain good results. And, and the, the ultimate goal when we do this is basically to burn the, the, the bad fat that we've already had in our stores so that we can get rid of that, that, that excess adipose tissue. And we'll, also what we're trying to do is to make that body work, work for us. Now, there was also something that I read in the book, uh, one of the books that I read was about the mitochondria. And trying to get more mitochondria to actively work in our body, so that we can have more energy, and that and, and that will definitely get us to um, burning more fat by, by having more mitochondria, uh, more brown fat as opposed to white fat, because white fat is just basically adipose tissue, and that's what we try to do is try to get that burn that that out the way. Now, what I do is that when I think basically I eat about like probably when I come home, I eat probably at in between six thirty and seven o'clock, and I won't eat anything else until probably if I go to that go go exercising maybe to ten thirty eleven eleven thirty. So you're talking about maybe 13, 14 hours oh, yeah. of, of, so you're of injecting. fasting. Yeah. yeah. You're injecting yeah. that. And that's yeah. intermittent fasting. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't have to be 13, 14 hours. Yeah. It can be eight hours. Yeah. You know, it can be yeah. six. Because you know, I start slow and build. But I've noticed that sometimes, like, for example, uh, I would eat probably about eight o'clock. And then probably about maybe, actually about four or five o'clock in the morning, I'm starving. I'm literally starving. But I hold off. I tell myself I gotta hold off. And I usually don't eat until probably about maybe eight thirty, nine o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I might have because if, if I'm taking my son to work, to work, excuse me, to 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 um, class, I might have a boiled egg or two. Yeah, and then that'll get me. That'll get me through to where I need to go at. So, how do you deal with um, trying to keep that on going? The the fasting going on. Don't you? So you just like use the coffee, or will you just have like a little a little snack or something like that? Usually coffee, um, uh, like in the generally in a regular morning. I'll have cup of coffee mm -hmm. and I mean I, you know, my, my work day starts at like 6 so I may have a cup of coffee in the morning uh, I mean I eat until about 8 I may eat some eggs yeah. and I'll eat some eggs and that's another thing um, uh, you know, we eat a lot of eggs uh, 
uh, people that are mm-hmm. uh, that are veterans on the field now. They eat eggs. They buy eggs and, mm-hmm. uh, because it's a good source of protein. And as your body adjusts, it carries you through the day. Yeah. Day. So if you find yourself, for instance, um, right now probably I eat maybe two eggs and maybe some sort of turkey bacon or turkey sauce. And that'll carry me through the day. Um, I'll have that cup of coffee, I'll eat that, I'll eat. And mm-hmm. I won't eat anymore until I get home. Mm-hmm. Put down maybe five, six. Mm-hmm. You know, I may eat a piece of cheese or something. Mm-hmm. That is a little snack bag that you eat on the floor. Okay. Okay. Something to hold. But that's about it. Okay. And a second, maybe a second cup of coffee. Okay. But, um, For instance, using the two eggs as a base mm-hmm. for yourself. If you eat two eggs yeah, in the morning and you find yourself getting hungry mm-hmm. quickly to your body, you know, you still adjust so, um, after five or maybe four or five hours. Then tomorrow try throw an extra egg in and three eggs. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's okay to eat a couple of them. Yeah. Um, I have not had any problems with cholesterol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, I to, uh, my physician, I spoke to my physician about it, and um, uh, he complimented me on the weight loss. And it, he himself, uh, as far as age and cholesterol, and relief, it's not a complete myth, but it's, I mean, it's not something you need to worry about. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not, you know, just eating more eggs is not raise your cholesterol. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Throw it in. And, like I say, eggs are a good source. Mm-hmm. It's stretchy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I caution you to um, vary it. Because after a while, it gets boring to eat. <laughs> you know, sometimes I get tired of it. Yeah. So yeah. I just skip it. Yeah. Um, you know, um, and then as you get more and more into it, you find that you better go a little longer. It was like you were talking about yesterday. I mean, yesterday. Actually, I was I was up a little late last night, so maybe about 11 o'clock. I ate something. I ate a little something. Because mm-hmm. um, I had eaten dinner early. And from 11 o'clock last night to mm-hmm. um, before you got here, maybe 7 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I, that was my first meal of the day. Mm-hmm. Just before you got here, see. Mm-hmm. I went from 11 o'clock, so it was at mm-hmm. 12. Yeah, it was about 20 hours. About 20 hours mm-hmm. That's the longest I've ever been. That's a long, long time. Been. That's, that's long a long time. time. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, about, that's about my limit. Yeah. And, yeah. and, I, and all day I think I had like water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And occasionally I'll be there. Just, mm-hmm. you know, and then when you came, I had some squash mm-hmm. and, some and I had some chicken. Mm-hmm. So, how do you address? Because I, because some it's dilly dilly. Oh, dilly, well, I need to get into some more dilly dilly. <laughs> but how do you address that occasional sugar thing? Because sometimes, I mean, we all got to have a sweet tooth. How do you address that? Uh, everything in moderation. I mean, don't, mm-hmm. um, don't put yourself into a zone that, you know, everything is... I think the worst thing in the world is for any diet or any kind of, uh, any kind of diet that everything is absolute. All right. No, just like the keto diet. Okay, no bread, no carbs, no pasta. Is that to say that you're never going to have a, 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 a small portion of macaroni and cheese and Thanksgiving? Mm-hmm. Right? But that means that your daily life is, does not involve eating. That. So sugar. Okay, it's not every day. Mm-hmm. Right? Occasionally, like you said, you I've gone a month. I haven't had a piece of sugar. I, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna 
you pass the ice cream, the daily scoop, and say, I want a scoop of ice cream. It's not going to kill Sure. Uh, but we're still abstaining. We're still staying away from shit. Mm -hmm. but it's, yeah, nothing is actually. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not going to. It's not going to kill me. You're not going to put 50 pounds on it just because you <laughs> ate a scoop of ice cream. No, no more than we're going to. Yeah. Put on a bunch of pounds by drinking these light beers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I got to say this, and I did good this past, this past week because um, I went to some places that there's a, a place in Howard County called Kiki's. It's right on 103. Mm -hmm. And they got the best snowballs, man. I'm talking about old school snowballs. I'm talking about the kind that. You, you hit it, and the ice crinkles up, and then they got <laughs> lots of juice in the sucker. Mm. <laughs> and my son introduced me to Kiki's, and then I introduced uh, my nephew, Pooh, to Kiki's also. And I took both of them there, and uh, and I said, like, like last Saturday, I, get, I said, okay, well, aren't you getting anything? No, I'm good. So they got their treat. Who got his treat? I owe him a treat. And then Trey, I told him, he was mad. Y'all want the kickies to take me? So, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So I, I purposely, uh, we, he, he broke his iPhone. Didn't break it. He broke, he shattered the screen. So uh, we were on our way back to rush hour. So I stopped and got him a treat. So... Where's this case? Where's he has he has a, a case, but the case is not strong enough. Is that your iPhone? It's not an iPhone. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, no, that's uh, I'm, 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 I'm Android. Do you have a case? Yes, he has. Do you have a case? Do I have a case? Yes, it's right over there. Oh. Yeah, but see, he was playing drums yes. and with a plastic stick, and it shattered. You know, I don't know. Oh, wow. was, I don't know what he was thinking about. But, you know, maybe he thought he was Ringo Starr or something like that. <laughs> but, um, but I'm proud of myself that I was able to abstain. You know, because they make great, great, not, not for me. great, great snowballs, man. I mean, oh man, <laughs> I, I get it. I'm, I'm yeah, with you. I'm yeah. With you. yeah. Let me tell you about the, the endless trips to I. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. uh -huh. Which is not my favorite. Sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of I popping up. What's going on? I'm sorry. They got sorry. a new one out there on Route 40. You know, I know the one over here stinks. But, uh, yeah, they got a brand new one over on Route 40. You know where, where the old one used to be at? It's across the street from that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Matter of fact, okay. even worse than that, Cracker Barrel. I hadn't even been to the new one over there in Grand. <laughs> okay, we have one New York here. Yeah. In, in Crawford County. Crawford County, yeah. Right. And I can tell you the trips that I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> and tried to stay in. Yeah. You know, the pancake, mom was pancake. But, <laughs> but I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Uh -huh. But I had to watch the family. Yeah. 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 And I just smell him. Why does he got it? I just smell it. Here you go with delicious pancakes. Carb, carb, carb. No, no. I'll just have the eggs. <laughs> Would I have a uh, grandpa or something? Uh -huh. yeah. what, what you should do is you need to download <laughs> Easy Money. <laughs> Put <it> on here. <laughs> oh, hey, that's a. You got to look on uh, eBay for that. That way. I said we could get all live. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do with it. I'll tell you what that food is. And I'll put them all up. All mm -hmm. of our favorites. Mm -hmm. Our favorites. <laughs> but to, to me, I think that um, since I've been doing this, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen a lot of progress. My blood pressure has gone down by 100 points now. Oh, that's great. Uh, blood pressure's gone down by 100 points. All, um, that, all that falls in line. Everything falls in I line. Mean, I mean, the, the doctors who I went to, um, I had a, a doc, an eye appointment. The doctor said that my my vision is, is the same, but the area where, my, where I had that, that 
area of blockage, it started healing itself. And she says most times this doesn't heal itself on its own. It's healing itself. So uh, that, that was it. And then uh, she said, uh, well, let me take your blood pressure, Mr. Johnson. Blood pressure was 154 over 90. And my blood pressure at the beginning of March I remember. Was, was sky high. I was going to kick your ass. Yeah. Yeah. So this... Sorry, sorry ladies and gentlemen, but... TJ is a medical professional. We had to delete his. <laughs> He's a medical professional. And he walked, he walked into my zone with a, with a sky high blood pressure. I'm like, I, I didn't know. I'm like, no, no, no. You're, you're a medical professional. You're supposed to know. Blow me. Whatever. <laughs> well, that's my intention. I'm sorry. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> but we got we, but we got it like that. I could tell her to blow me here, tell me to blow me. So anyway, we we, we, we do the same thing. Yeah, we've been doing yeah. that for yeah, yeah. Long time. yeah. A long time. Many moons, many moons, many moons. But let me let me ask you, what are some of your favorite foods to well some of your your, your dishes that you like to cook on the keto? Do you have any, Oh yeah, yeah. Do you have anything that that yeah. I might And want once to try? again, and once again, if you haven't already and um, I, I know you've been on the website. Yeah. For those of you listening, and I'm no sponsor. I get paid no money for this website, but go to it if you're interested. Dietdoctor.com. It Actually, he's really, on really he's great. on this right. He's on this. He's on that doctor. Doc doc yeah. Yes. He's on he's this. He's a Swedish yeah. doctor. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're, <laughs> if you're American, <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're American guys like us. <laughs> he's gonna sound funny for a minute because you're like, "What's wrong with this boy?" But he's Swedish. But he's very good. He's very good at what he does. He's put together a team of, of of people that are dedicated to this type of lifestyle and to you know, eliminating obesity without surgery, without you know, without the nonsense. Just eating good food. He believes in eating good food. Eating when you're Eating only when you're hungry. Is he on eating Facebook? Eating until you're satisfied. Is he on Facebook? No, no. But his website is free. But they have a, they want you to to help with the, I guess, the, with the, the website and uh, the other endeavors. Um, they have a $9 membership for your month. Um, and it's only if you want it. But it, access, it gives you access to more videos. And it gives you access to, um, they have people that, uh, they load these, uh, Recipes, keto recipes, and they're fantastic. It's worth nine dollars a month. Trust me, it is worth nine dollars a month to be access it because they're, they're not only are they good recipes, but most of them you can make them like thirty minutes or less. They're very, very good. Uh, there, there's a there's a ground turkey. You can use ground beef, I guess. Ground beef or ground turkey and uh, uh, cabbage mm -hmm. uh, recipe is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, oh man, they have. Oh, so many chicken, and, mm -hmm. I mean, just a variety of, di of different mm -hmm. recipes with vegetables, mm -hmm. and um, some of my favorite is like I said, just um, that's probably one of my favorites. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and they most of the time there, there's there's vegetables, there's a protein, there's you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe chicken, beef, or turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, a vegetable and cheese, you know, cheese. You don't have to give up cheese. I'm like, hey, I can live with that. <laughs> I gave up sugar. Don't take my cheese away. So, you know, so a lot of the dishes include cheese. And they're very good. Mm -hmm. I've learned. Uh, I've learned how to to uh, um, not through their website, but let me throw this in too. YouTube. Everybody has YouTube. There are a lot of channels that. Uh, have keto keto cooking. They have keto recipes. They show they, you how to. There's make one it. the Headbangers. Headbangers uh, Kitchen. Kitchen, which I've he watched is, before. You watch it. I've watched he is it my before. favorite. I like him. I like this guy. You get a chance to look at it. Take a look at it. Headbangers Kitchen. He has a bunch of. He has his own website now too. Is an Indian guy. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. What do you call it? Uh, when I say Indian, I mean Pakistan, like that kind of. 
thing. Uh, forgive me if I'm, I'm, I'm politically <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> forgive me if I'm politically incorrect. But yes, uh, he's Pakistan. I mean, he's uh, uh, a Christian. Uh, but he, he's, he's, he's very good. He's, he's very good. Boy. Boy. <laughs> very flavorful and easy to fix. You, you <laughs> almond bread, everything from making bread from almond flour and cooking the flour, which believe it or not, is not bad. It's really not bad. I've tried to, I'm still trying to perfect that so I can at least, I can make a sandwich every now with almond flour, almond bread, which is essentially no carbs at all. So, and, mm -hmm. you know, some of the, you got to be careful with some of those recipes because some of them are very, very highly egg based. So they come out well. You know, I haven't had a problem. I made one and it was, when I made it, say egg base, there's a lot of eggs in it. So it's going to taste eggy, even though it's bread. <laughs> you know, but... It tastes eggy. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have an egg taste. It's like, uh, no. You know? <laughs> but there are some almond flour recipes that are really good, and they taste like bread. So, you know, you use it, and, uh, and you can you know, make a, a burger or whatever. You're using this bread, and you're still keto. You're still a keto. Okay. Fantastic stuff. Well, but try those two. Look at those two websites. Definitely dietdoctor.com, please. That helped me. That got me stuck. Mm -hmm. um, nice. A lot of good videos that encourage mm -hmm. you. They mm -hmm. tell you, explain intermittent fasting, explain how to eat good food. And, and I said, I thought it was a gimmick. I couldn't believe it, but it was actually a buzz. You know, it actually was true. And I, I, like I said, I, even, you know, I'm still a member in one or two years now. So I pay the nine dollars a month. I give them <laughs> just to have, for helping me to get where I am. So that's the dietdoctor.com. Dietdoctor.com. Okay, dietdoctor.com. We'll put that in now in the description at the bottom uh, for a recommendation. Mm. Also, the headbangers. I've seen that before, which is oh, pretty, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, probably one of the best uh, YouTube, in my opinion. Yeah, one of the best YouTube keto. Yeah. Um, he, every couple of days, he puts on a keto recipe yeah. of some sort. Yeah. And, uh, and and because he's, like I said, uh, <laughs> forgive me, you know, in my culture, we call these people Indian, but like Pakistan or, or, mm -hmm. or that religion. I mean, that um, persuasion. Persuasion. Mm -hmm. um, they cook with a lot of cumin and a lot of. Uh, Terry, 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 Terry. Yeah. Yes, but it has a but it's good. I li I like the flavor. I like that kind of food. Yeah. So the flavors are good. But a lot of times, even when they make wings or something, it's it's good. It's that kind of flavor. Yeah. So I've used the recipes. And I love them. And, uh, I've sent him messages. You know, thank him for, for doing it. He's a, he's a very very nice young man. He's trying. To, I guess he's trying to make his money on YouTube the way he can. Well, He's doing good. let He's me doing ask good. you a question because I've, I've seen him and I've, I've questioned his uh, cooking methods. Okay. Because uh, he made some wings. And which one? The Murph, Murph McGarry? Uh, I forgot which one. Uh, we'll discuss it after. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but he used um, baking powder. You know what? I'm glad you mentioned that because I have... I have experimented with this. Okay. So I know what he's doing. Okay. And, and once again, uh, Making the listeners a, out there. He's trying to make those a lot of the what, fried wings. What they do is, yeah. and he's not the only one that does that, but if you look on YouTube, a lot of the oven bake, just like I make the wings today, yeah. Yeah. I've made them with the baking powder. Yeah. What they do is they mix baking powder. Not a lot, just a little bit. A little bit, okay. Right. right. You're not coating them in baking powder. Yeah, you just. But you mix them like, I like put it this way: I, I had maybe um, three, two, three pounds of wings, okay, and maybe a teaspoon mm -hmm. of baking powder. I throw in and turn it around. Mm -hmm. And what the baking powder is supposed to do is draw the moisture out and make them crispy. So that's the purpose of adding that baking powder. So that's, that's, that's that, what it was. That, but, that's where that, that came from. Okay, but there are a lot of videos on YouTube that they, they, they do that. Yeah. But but do they come up crispy? It does dry them out, yes. It does dry them out. Now, crispy like fried? No. no okay. I wouldn't say that, but they are drier. You can tell. But they're just tougher than me. Okay. The skin is tougher. Like It's drier. More, more leathery. 
Right. Well, that's so, a, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the way I, I, you know, I, I particularly like my chicken wings. Well, if I oven bake them, I like them very tender. So, yeah. You know. Because you can get that consistency. Right. Because I've, I've baked chicken wings before. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at that because before I knew how to fry chicken, I can bake the hell out of it. Yeah. You know, so I, I but. And you know, the key to baking good wings is baking them long. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. give them some time. You gotta give them time. Yeah, you, you can't just, rush them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you see people there, uh, they, they can bake them in 30 minutes. Well, I bake my wings, it takes me like an hour, hour to An hour, minutes. well, yeah, an hour, an hour and a half. An really? Hour and a half. You, you really, an hour and a half. If you yeah. want, because you want the color and you want the consistency of fried chicken. I want that meat to be soft. Oh, yeah. Tasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. cause I, because myself, mm-hmm. I remember when I was, I was. In the tenth grade, I oh. made some fried chicken. Well, other than did I eat any of that then? I don't remember. No, but it was it was oven baked fried chicken, and believe me, so I missed it. You did, you did. <laughs> but believe me, it came Big out. Carney. It came out no, because Karen was doing her own thing. But um, the exciting thing about that is, you know. That I've seen these people, but come up with their with their recipes and and the, for me today, last week the challenge was coming up with a crab cake recipe. <laughs> so uh, I went to the head bangers. He had a, a he was using. Canned crab. Okay. That's a mistake. I was going to say. <laughs> Let me clarify. Ladies and no, 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 no. Let me just roll out. Then you can. You can. I'm gonna right. let you do this. But he is canned crab. No, no. Crab. I'm gonna let you go. But I okay. just want to clarify. Yeah. Because we talk. We're saying that's a mistake. Yeah. You say yeah, canned yeah. crab. Canned crab. Right. Yeah. Right. Just yeah. in case anybody didn't know, this this podcast, <laughs> we are both Marylanders, and there's no way in the world that you can get a real crab cake from Maryland. Forget about it. If you live, if you living in Wyoming, you ain't gonna get one. I'm sorry. If you live in North Carolina, you're not gonna get one. Unless you know somebody from Maryland's gonna make you one. It's gonna be a fish cake. So that being said, good. So um, yeah, that was a that was a that was a misstep. Okay, some some canned bumblebee canned uh, crab cake. Was not going to be coming across my desk. Was not coming <laughs> close to me. No. Let me interject. Let me interject. My cousin Vinny. You know my cousin Vinny? Everybody remembers my cousin Vinny. If you haven't saw the movie, my cousin Vinny, you have to see it. Okay, there's a, there's a part where Joe Pesci asked the guy on the stand, remember that? About the oh, yeah. Grits. About the grits. No yeah. self respect. Yeah. The, about the, the yeah. slow cooked grits and no self respect. Yeah. Um, Southerners. Southerners. Southern, yeah. Quick grits. It's like, no self respect in Maryland. We use crab candy. We got to make canned crab meat. Yeah. yeah. Crab except meat. for, <laughs> except for, yes, yes. It's already canned, but you can still see the meat. Okay? Because, like, in. No. <laughs> no, I'm not, no, no, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking no. about. I'm not talking about this. You can still see the meat through that. The can. The, the can, yes. The, the top is. Okay, you know what? Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. I'll give you that because yeah. there is a uh, yeah. a shopper's carry brand. Yeah. Of crab meat. Yeah. That's from like overseas. Yeah. yeah. But we're, we're not talking about actually but, crab meat. Yes, yeah. it's really crab meat. But we're not talking about the shelf stable right. type. Right. Yeah. Because when you compare the type of... No, no, we're not talking about tuna. Talking, you know, we're not talking about the tuna. The tuna style. No. <laughs> it's the tuna... They actually carry it in a can, but yeah. it's on ice. Yeah, right. yeah. If it's, it's on ice... It's pasteurized. If it's on ice, right. pasteurized, it's that, it's fresh. Right. Fresh. So, and that's, that's only... And, and let me clarify for the hot brown. We really use that in the wintertime. Yeah. Because in the summertime, it's got to be fresh. <laughs> it's not going to be in a can. We ain't using that. Right. So... <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to be picking some by some Mexicans also because we have problems with uh, picking crabs now. <laughs> but anyway, so um, my thing is, uh, I had some. Um, I wanted some crab cakes, so there was one that had um, used panko breadcrumbs. Oh yeah, is this YouTube? YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
There's, there's some amazing stuff on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. But, but Panko breadcrumbs. Like I said. Panko and, breadcrumbs. And, and again, to remind you folks, we're from Maryland. So I've looked on YouTube yeah. for crab cake recipes. Panko and it's breadcrumbs. just amazing. Panko breadcrumbs. <laughs> Somebody cracked open a can. They were making crab cake. They had chicken. What was it bumblebee? Yeah. Crab meat? Yeah. And like a tuna can. It was crab Yeah, yeah that, was, that, was, that, was that was headbangers. That was headbangers. No, it was another one. It was, it was another one. Oh, I saw another head. video. Of the, it was a black <laughs> matter of fact, it was a guy who was in Philly. Okay. It was using <laughs> crab meat. <laughs> crab meat. <laughs> bumblebee crab meat. I was like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, Lord. Sorry, that's sorry, that's, folks. That's We're a, we're crab snobs here. We have to have fresh, that's real crab meat to a, make crab cake. That's a nightmare. And that's we don't nightmare. use pango bread crumbs. We use, you either use bread, you break it up, yeah, and bread, or you use uh, Some saltine crackers, 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 you crumble yeah, them up. Right, crack right. Up, yeah. Those right. are the only two. Those are the only two. No pango. <laughs> <laughs> no bumblebee. <laughs> if, you, if, if, your, if your crab cakes come from a shelf, <laughs> you don't want it. <laughs> and if you've ever had a Maryland crab, a real Maryland crab, you won't want it any other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything else would be just moving. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, we've been talking for uh, almost oh. 54 minutes now. Oh, Lord. So, we, I mean, this is a good, good conversation. So, mm -hmm. I want to thank you guys for listening to, our, uh, to this uh, podcast. I'm going to put this podcast, going to be on uh, YouTube, and then uh, be also on the uh, SoundCloud too. I want to thank you very much, uh, Dilly Dilly, and Dilly Dilly, and uh, we're, we're going to keep you updated on how we're doing. We're going to um, we'll put, we'll post next month. We'll do we'll post next month. Next month, we're, 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 what next month we're going to do is we're we're doing way in next month yep. again, um, and then we'll 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 see how well we're doing here. Um, uh, I do want to stress to everybody that. Um, uh, well, our our examples of what we've been through is we've been through because this is our personal opinions, but everybody's individualism is is different. Please see your health your healthcare professional in order to decide what you want to do. Um, now it's getting close to well May now. We saw so weather's getting nice. Go out and get some exercise. Get some movement. You know some people. You guys need to go out and at least get an exercise routine going. We at least walk for 10 minutes or that kind of thing. Uh, spend some time with people and just walk around. So uh, I want to express my thank you to uh, Officer, well, excuse me, Deputy Phillips for his his kind words and his, uh, his heart. Excuse me, uh, Deputy Sergeant uh, Phillips for his uh commentary and, uh, and for his uh, professionalism thank you very much and um, and his um, his hospitality so uh, any any parting words uh, thank you to everybody that chose to listen to us and uh, I hope we didn't waste your time uh, Hope you tune in again soon. Um, that's it. Do you have an email that you want people? If they, if it's somebody who who um, is interested, do you want to give somebody like your email address? And sure, sure. A, email me at bphillips eight one two at hotmail dot com. That's b as in boy Phillips p h i l l i p s eight one two at hotmail dot com. It's not something he can spell. <laughs> Is the weekend duffer still using? He's still using that. No, no, it's gone. <laughs> what happened to the weekend duffer, man? I, I lost How'd you lose it? I, I let it. Go. Oh Please. man, you, 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 you bitch. I let it fall out of <laughs> Well, uh, uh, well, I'm going to say uh, thank you very much, and um, um, you can. Um, Follow the uh, podcast on uh, SoundCloud. Also, we are also on, uh, on Facebook uh, and then uh, Healthy Apple Tree. And then also, if you wanted to send some correspondence, you can also email me at Chief 
1B at yahoo.com. And uh, we appreciate your listening to us. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop us a line and, and uh, or leave some comments on the on the uh, on the YouTube. Okay, thank you. And we we'll see you guys down the road. Peace. I'm out. Okay. Well, that was the podcast uh, that we did back in 2017, and um, and like I said, uh, it was a it was a blast uh, doing it. Uh, we we you know those are the only two uh, podcasts we did together. You seen the uh, Barry and I we enjoyed uh, our you know our banter. Uh, and we had a, a great time um, doing the podcast, and I, I wish we had had more um, time to do this, uh, with the podcast, because he really enjoyed it. Uh, in the intervening years, um, you know, he um, he had some health challenges, uh, um, and he's had some ups and downs. Um, I think that the, the podcast um, that was before, uh, you know, he had some family tragedies. Uh, about a year later on, a year, a year and a half later on, his uh, wife passed away. She had a brain tumor, uh, uh, which took a lot out of him. Believe me, and uh, and, and uh, I mean, he was still juvenile, but you know he was just, you know he he missed his his wife terribly, and um, <clears throat> and uh, September no December. December twenty eighth, uh, two thousand twenty one, um, he succumbed to, uh, I believe it was a massive heart attack, um, and um, he, you know, he passed away, um, and it, it was a shock to all of us, I mean, it was to me, and um, and the thing was is that um, he had a heart attack uh, in, the, in 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 his in his room. And um, um, uh, he fell down. And he was on the bed, and he never came came back up, which is a tragedy because um, his father passed away the same way. His father had a had a heart attack um, back in 1980. Um, he had a massive heart attack, uh, and he uh, he fell down dead in um, um, in the kitchen, and I seen his body. And uh, for him to go with the same way that his, his, his pops died, you know, I mean, it was it was a really a sad thing. And uh, um, you know, it's uh, I'm still getting over it now. And you know, uh, whenever I hear these tapes, you know, I think about all the, the good times that we had. So, you know, uh, but I do remember him, and, and he was definitely health conscious. But towards the you know the last few weeks of his his life, he he started slowing down. Uh, he retired, and when I told him when people start retiring, that's when people start dying. And I told him, "Say, to, don't you die on me." He's like, "Man, I'm gonna do some other things," but he 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 just didn't have it anymore. He was just done, and uh, he stopped going out. Uh, he you know, he could play golf. He, he stayed in the house all the time. He got depressed. So, and we talked about things. And, you know, his diet had changed also. He had a lot of leg swelling. Um, you know, he had CHF um, uh, plus his diabetes too. Plus, uh, he was getting a lot of bad information uh, about his diet. Um, he was, you know, he, he was, he was, he just he just gave up. He, he they really did. Um, his memory started started lapsing, and he just got into a self destructive mode, and it was really really bad. Um, you know, and I you know we tried to cheer him up and all this sort of stuff, but um, you know we, he, it was the Christmas season, and you know um, he just 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 lost it. Just didn't have it anymore, so it was a it was a trying time for him. So um, um, you know when we did get together, you know 
we had a good time, but he he he, he yes, slow down the amount of uh, drinking he would do. I mean, he might just have you, you hear me. We we would be drinking at least three or four beers each, and then uh, towards the the end of his life, he was only he was only doing even a half a beer. So, uh, you know, I knew there was something wrong. I said, I'm over here drinking four beers here. You only have, have one. And so, yeah, so I, it, was a, it was a travesty. So um, it made me feel bad. But um, anyway, um, thank you very much for watching this podcast. It's so long. But um, I want to say thank you. And you folks, uh, Take care. I'm going to post this on YouTube. Uh, you might have to put a little thing up here for another video you can look at. Okay. All right. Peace.